On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are here with the engine and transmission in the subframe that came out of my Jag F-Type yesterday with our awesome Harbor Freight hydraulic stand. That made working on this very easy. Now it's time to see how easy it is to separate all of this nonsense now that it's on the floor. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo, and like I said, I'm here with the engine and transmission, the drivetrain unit out of my Jag F-Type. And today, we're gonna try to get as far as we can on getting the engine out of the cradle. So, I've taken a look at this. There's a lot of stuff I really wanna leave connected, and those things are the hydraulic power steering, as many of those connections as I can. So I think we're already looking at kind of dropping the accessories and letting them all flop to the side. And I'd also like to just leave the transmission alone and pull the engine away from that. So after looking at it, obviously we know the exhaust has to come off. That's the very first thing when you're doing work on them like this. So I have soaked everything in penetrating lube, but the more I've looked at it, the more I think that the comments are probably right. We're gonna take the manifolds off the engine and try to just kind of set it to the side instead of just getting everything taken apart because everyone said these studs will not come apart. And there's plenty of Jag techs in the comments that have done this many times. I'm gonna to listen to them because I've broken a lot of exhaust studs and those ones do not look like they're gonna come apart. So we're gonna to try to leave the manifolds on the cats and just slide them backwards. Who knows if that's gonna work. Then we're gonna pull all the accessories. I think that's the right way to do this. That way we don't have to break too many things apart. And then hopefully we can just grab the cherry picker, give this thing a big wiggle after we get the torque converter bolts out and the uh, bell housing and pull the engine right off of the stand and just leave everything sitting. So we're gonna find out right now if that's gonna work. Uh, we're gonna grab some jack stands, support the subframe so that it stays right where it's at. And hopefully in a, a few hours here, this thing's two separate pieces and we're ready to uh, do the actual engine swapping. Jag went all the way in hiding the bolts to these heat shields, they are buried way up inside here. So, good luck. Oh, yep, I see the other one. It's all the way up behind the alternator. These are all eights. And without a swivel socket, you're gonna have a time taking these things off. Okay. There's one. Pretty interesting. These are some kind of, it looks like a giant Torx drive to pull the manifolds off. Also, these manifolds are kind of a work of art in here. It's like a big S with two cylinders and then it picks up this one. And then of course on the V8, I would assume this hump continues, picks up the last cylinder that's right here and then comes down. So pretty cool packaging. Let's grab a giant Torx driver and see if these things come apart after we soak it with penetrating lube. Just paint it with our happy little penetrating brush. The fasteners on the exhaust uh, look like they might be a T50. That's what fits in there. And a T55 does not fit, but whatever it is, is absolutely not a T50. It's uh, more of a T52 or something, 52 and a half. Somewhere splitting the difference between T50 and T52. This does not fit very well. That's why I am using the ratchet and taking it very easy, breaking these exhaust bolts off because I do not want to break them. Now we have all the O2 sensors disconnected, everything pulled out of the little wire routing clips they've got throughout. I do want to keep these O2s connected to their uh, little wire routing clips, so to not lose those, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull their bell housing bolts out. Should just take two seconds here. Yep. Oh yeah, none of this has ever been touched. This engine's definitely never been out. Uh, there's no witness marks on any of the bolts, and they came out perfectly, so they were never over torqued. So now all of the wiring, on the exhaust is loose. If you're taking your exhaust shields off, you do need to know that the power steering pump blocks all the access to one of the bolts that holds the exhaust shield. So you gotta get all your accessories off before you go chasing the exhaust manifolds. So what a crazy job. There we go. Get our tension out of this thing. Drop that belt off. And now we can start pulling accessories. So. 
Are you kidding me? If you want to change the rear serpentine belt, you have to pull this entire assembly. Look at all these Ford logos. Everyone's like, it's a Jag engine. FOMOCO, 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 FOMOCO. Every part on this thing is stamped the FOMOCO, except for the supercharger. Oh, well, the heads say Jag. Whole lot of Ford parts, Jag. I lied. You can get the belt out after a lot of maneuvering. You just have to go down past the uh, crank pulley and then back up and you'll get this thing off. It just takes a lot of work. So it's not impossible and you don't have to pull all these bolts off. Be prepared for a fight if it's in the car. And the first manifold is finally coming off after way more work than I ever expected. And it's funny, these uh, heat shields are almost completely built in. They are built into the gaskets. Wild. All right, now for the second slide. I'll show you guys the magic of this exhaust coming apart here. These have all been broken loose by the ratchet before we started. So they should be very easy, even though they're not. And one more. Well, that makes a very big difference. I'm gonna have to order some exhaust gaskets, I think, before this goes back together. And here in just a moment, we should be able to reach in there. Actually, now that the manifolds are off, we can reach in pretty easily on the other side to pull those uh, torque converter bolts out. When the manifolds are on, there's just no access to this little hole that's punched on the other side. So now, I think I can turn the crank pulley and start removing those bolts, which will get us really close to separating this thing. Now it's time to get in here and start pulling all these clamps off of the fuel line, all that fun stuff that's just kind of routed through here and in our way. And as I do it, I'm gonna put all of the bolts back in the holes they came out of, of course, to make life easy for me. So there's one of the fuel lines. There's a coolant crossover right here. I'll go ahead and pull that, make a big mess. I can't tell if this is air or coolant crossover. Sure looks like coolant. Well, on the label for these, I'm just gonna put uh, bolts that went in the crossover thing because I'm really not sure if that's air or water. And right here, the last of our fuel line. And another bolt to put back. So that was a lot of progress. As you can see, we have basically everything stripped off the top of this, except for this one ground wire. Pull that right now. And I think I've got the harness off the engine. I just need to pull a couple more wires up here. And we're so close. It's really coming down to those torque converter bolts. That's the last thing I'm doing because I am dreading them. Getting the harness off of here and trying not to break everything. That's always the fun part, as everybody knows. I think we did it though. Oh, no, we're gonna leave it on the transmission. I just need to pull off this eight. So that pretty much got everything where it needed to be right there. A couple more uh, Christmas trees that were shoved in there and one very pesky connector on the alternator. And now that all the wiring's off, it's time to start pulling our bolts out of the torque converter. And honestly, with just a swivel socket and the impact, I think we're gonna get this out of here. So let's hit the button and find out. It worked. Don't drop them in there. If you do drop them in there, you're gonna have a bad day. So now it's time to start turning this engine over and finding all the bolts. And after that, this didn't take as long as I thought. This is. It's going pretty well, guys. It's going pretty well. I got a few things left to take off, but so far I think we're making good progress and I am very happy about that. Keep going to the next one one more time. If That's insane if that's actually it. I've seen, yeah. that was it. All right, <laughs> I've seen three before, so four, I guess. We've got one bolt left in the alternator here. We made it. I gotta pop off a little clip right here. There were only four bolts in the torque converter. That's absolutely wild and I love it. I know I've seen three before, but four on a European car? That seems like sacrilege. You'd think those German engineers would have, I guess it is Ford actually. The, the German engineers would have put at least 10 fasteners in there. Well, if one fails, we're gonna need another one. Okay. 
alternator's out. Other than one bracket that is holding all these lines to the oil pan, which it looks like it just has one bolt on it. Here's the AC compressor, which means we have everything off. So the next thing should be pulling our bolts off the engine mounts here and lifting it up and forward. I think it's gonna come right out. We're about to find out together. Let's get to it. Quick pro tip, the crank sensor is still on the bottom of the engine. You can take that out whenever you want or you can leave it in. But when you're pulling these things in and out, a lot of times you end up with the flywheel teeth or the tone ring interacting with the crank sensor. And if it does that, you're gonna break it and you might break it off inside the bell housing. And all of those things make for a very bad day. So I'm just going around here and working mine out. There's just one bolt that holds it in and we should be. It's kind of rocking back and forth now, just about all the way home. I figured this was the last thing I should do to make sure that I don't end up ruining my whole install here. Okay, that took, that took way too long. The sensor totally corroded into the case there. But there's the crank sensor. There's nothing else in our way. Let's get to it. It's time to have the time of our right, Okay, I'll stop. Uh, it's time to grab some straps. That's where I was going with this. Throw them around these engine mounts. I'll pull those top bolts off right now. No reason not to. And bell housing bolts are the only thing left. That, this took a little while, but honestly, it's well engineered and I can't say I hate it. I wish I could, but I can't. It's pretty good. The time has come. We have the engine rigged. I am of course using one inch ratchet straps because it seems to make people angry when you use one inch ratchet straps and there's literally no reason they would ever fail on a load like this. So uh, they've done me right about a million times. We'll see if you prove me wrong this time. Ratchet straps, here we go. We're gonna leave, uh, actually I better load up the jack and then we can go ahead and pull all the rest of the bolts out. We're starting to take some load. Yeah, I know, I lifted it a little off center. I know what I did. It's just a lot easier to do this than it is to uh, try to rig hooks onto these things. No big deal at all, nothing happened. It's probably because it's all corroded together. So now, over here you can see we've got the big gap a big gap until the mun's not hot it's really opening up this is one of those two plus two is four gaps that was it it released the dowel but now we definitely have trouble over here on this side we got a ways to go before this one Let's me in. Just being a pain. Use your screwdriver as a screwdriver. That's what they tell you. Cooperate, my boy. Of course, this last dowel is fighting me to the bitter end. It is absolutely stuck in there. And we've got the whole thing basically apart. As you can see, It's gonna come. It's just taking a, a lot of work. Everything else is completely off. So I'm definitely at that point. I can see the other dial over here is super rusted too. So a little bit of heat would work. I could do that, but I kind of would rather just keep wiggling and it's gonna come apart. So after that, this engine is out of here. I might even lift it up a little bit more. It might help me out. That's so what I ended up doing was lowering the engine back down and crushing the other side back together with some pliers and that freed up that dowel immediately. When I put those back together, remind me to put anti-seize on those things. I will put anti-seize on them. I probably shouldn't be lifting on the valve covers. I haven't heard it snap yet, so. Obviously I'm just chancing it. 
Everything's off. Ah, this thing rusted to the engine mounts on the subframe. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't exactly have the right chain hook selected there for our maneuvers today. We completed the maneuvers without incident. Well, this is a job that could have been completed much easier with my forklift. I didn't even didn't even think about that. I just get so used to pulling them with this bad boy that I get it done. So now here we clearly have an empty subframe and a transmission that's ready to drop right back on. I'm gonna try not to move any of this stuff so that it goes back together quickly and easily. And we didn't even have to break what this heat exchanger down here is. This is the transmission cooler actually, not power steering. And it's very nice because when you're pulling an engine, you don't have to break the transmission cooling system or the transmission fluid cooling system open. Awesome, because then you don't have to refill the transmission or worry about it at all. So it is truly a sealed unit, and they thought through it all. They were like, if the techs have to work on the engine, let's keep the transmission sealed forever. Obviously, as you guys know, put a bunch of miles on them, the fluid goes bad, then you change the fluid, accelerating how much faster it fails. So they solved that problem. That is pulling the Jag engine out of the subframe and away from the transmission with nothing but some hover fray tools and one inch ratchet straps. I love doing it with ratchet straps, just, just for the looks. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjerogirl.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Didn't even have to pull the harness off the transmission. Now you guys know, this is, this is my trick to it. I feel like it's probably the easiest way to get it done. Leave all the harnesses in place so that when you put them back on the engine, they just flop over and everything lands back in place. That was truly my goal. I don't want to have to hunt or untwist wires while we're putting it back together. Sweet! That was a huge piece of the puzzle. And for everybody that's wondering, a new engine's on the way. We'll talk about it soon.